Welcome to another Neba Spotlight. Today, I am very happy to present to you Isolda. Isolda, tell us about you. Tell us about your business. Thanks, Greg. Hi, everybody. I'm Isolda Trachtenberg. I am a former NASA master trainer, and I've taken their little secrets on how they innovate, and I'm taking it out to the world. So I teach people how to create, communicate, collaborate so they can innovate. But I'm going to be focusing on just one facet today. And that is the communication facet. So we're going to be looking at, oh my goodness, I can't, there we go. See if it worked. It worked, yay, I don't know what was happening there. So we're gonna be looking at communication and the way I'm gonna ask you to do things is this is gonna be a little bit more interactive than maybe usual. So I'm gonna ask you to try some things with me and give you some practices that will help your ability to communicate. And I guess the big thing is, why should you care? We need to speak all the time. And when we're in that space of having to, uh, if you'll remember the very first time you were late and you went, oh, mom, I'm late because, and you told this amazing story about why you were late when you were like 12, you were spinning a tale, you were telling a story, you were having a conversation and you needed to be convincing and persuasive and you needed them to trust you and believe you. But you also nowadays have to present, whether you're in a meeting, presenting to a single person, or presenting in front of hundreds. And then sometimes, if you are like me, you're the host of a podcast, or you might be a guest. You might want some earned media. So how do you do it? How do you build those skills and get over those fears? Because frankly, a lot of times we're afraid to communicate, but it is crucial that we do that. And I'm going to tell you a quick NASA story. Back in the 90s, NASA was building the Mars Climate Orbiter. It was going to go up. It was going to get all sorts of information and data from Mars Climate. The problem was they contracted out part of the mission. Part of the satellite was going to be built at NASA, and part was going to be built at Lockheed Martin. And guess what? NASA, during the middle of the project, switched over to metric measurement, and Lockheed Martin was at English measurement. And so the problem was NASA never told anybody. They didn't communicate that this was going to be happening. So when the mission went up and was trying to do its thing, it completely failed because nothing fit. So communicating better so that we can get this stuff done together is crucial for anybody who's trying to innovate, create, and collaborate. So I'm going to talk to you about using your voice, and I'm going to talk to you about Dr. Albert Morabian. And the reason I want to make this experiential is because most of the workshops I do are very much interactive and you get up and you do things. And I want to talk to you about how we take in information. 7% of it is the words we use, 38% is how we say them, and 55% is our body language. So we're going to focus on that 38%, but first... I'm going to give you a quick tip on how to listen better. If you are in a place where you have to listen, where you have to pay really good attention, here's what you do, and I want to ask you to try it with me. Take your fingers and just rub your earlobes. Try it with me. Just rub them. Rub, rub, rub. Get in there. Really rub those earlobes. And now, if you do it for about 20 seconds, you're going to notice that you hear things just a little bit better because you've awakened those nerve endings. So anytime you need to listen a little bit better, that's what you do. And the other part of this, of course, is uh, <laughs> sometimes we're afraid. We're afraid to use our voices. And I'm going to talk to you about three or four little techniques that you can use to use your voice better, again, so that people lean forward so that they can't wait to hear more. First thing, if you're afraid, take a moment and breathe. So I'm going to ask you to breathe, breathe with me. I want you to put your hands on your belly, keep your shoulders down and relaxed, and I want you to inhale for a count of four. So take a deep breath in, two, three, four, then hold your breath, two, three, four, then blow out for a count of six, two, three, four, five, six, and then hold for four, two, three, four. Anytime you're nervous, about to speak and afraid, take this and use this technique. It's going to really change how you approach your ability and how you approach your level of confidence. Breathing is the very first thing we do when we're born. 
And the very next thing we do, of course, is we make sound. So these two things are interconnected. You take your first breath and usually when you're born, you cry. You're making sound. You're communicating your needs with the world. You don't even have language yet, but you're doing it. Here we go again with this. Doesn't want to. There we go. Okay, so we've already done the listen. Ha, ha, ha. Now, I'm going to show you another little trick to help you hear how you sound. You know how people are afraid? Ugh, oh, I hate the way I sound on the phone. I hate hearing myself recorded. Anybody ever felt that way? Anybody ever listen to themselves and go, oh, this is awful? Okay, not everybody has this kind of microphone, <laughs> which makes you sound amazing. Uh, but we also don't get a really good representation of what we sound like. We just don't have it unless you're using like a $30,000 AKG 2500S microphone. You're getting a very, very different kind of presentation of what you actually sound like. So this is why we do the alphabet game. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Put one hand in front of your, sort of in front of your face. You can't see my hand right about there. And the other hand about here. And we're going to start saying the alphabet together. And I'm going to ask you, slowly raise your hands so that when you're about at J, your hands are really in front of you. And then what you're going to notice is that you can play with where your hands are and bounce your voice so that you can get a really, really good idea of what you sound like. So let's try it together. Ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S. And go ahead and drop it down. T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Raise your hand for me if you heard a difference when your hands were up near your face versus when they weren't. Yeah, it's really interesting, isn't it? And it gives you a really great idea on what you actually sound like as opposed to what you think you sound like. It's a very, very different experience. So anytime you're worried about it or concerned, do this and go, okay, does my voice sound a little too high? What do I need to do? If your voice sounds really high to you or strained, figure out a way to relax these muscles. If you relax them, you're going to have a much easier time holding your voice so that it's in the lower register. And as we know, people like to hear uh, Darth Vader speak more than they like to hear Alvin of Alvin and the Chipmunk speak. Because you know what? You want to have that authoritative sounding voice. And that's more, way more Darth Vader. We tend to think Darth Vader is much more authoritative than Alvin. All right, the next one, Again, if you want to be louder, if you want to speak so that, again, people want to hear you and they want to listen, one of the ways to do that is to create a bigger sound hole. If there are any musicians in the room, you know the bigger the instrument, the bigger the sound hole, the louder you're going to be. Way to do that is you take the tips of your two fingers and you stick them into your mouth. And I call it the two finger rule because this gives you the ability to make a bigger sound hole. So I'm going to ask you to just inhale deeply and do an ah. You don't have to sing it, just ah. Ready? Ah. Now do the same thing with the tips of your fingers. Make your teeth that far apart and do it again. One, two, three. Ah. Did you hear it? Did you hear a difference in the sound? That's one of the things that we can do is just make a bigger sound hole and you will be amazed at how much bigger and broader you sound and more resonant. All righty, next trick. Yes, I ride motorcycles. And one of the things that you learn when you ride motorcycles is where you look is where you'll go. So I want you to say the words, I love you. And just look at your camera, look at your, your computer and just go, I love you. Try it with me. I love you. Now, change your focus. Look at, for you, especially Joanne, you're outside, great. Look far away. Look somewhere far away. You could look at the corner of your room and do the same thing and focus on the corner of the room and say, I love you. Are you ready? I love you. Can you hear a difference in what you sounded like? If you change your focus, you immediately change the size of your voice without having to do any extra work. It's really cool and super easy. Next slide. Here we go. So if you have any questions, I invite you to contact me. Subscribe to my podcast because, frankly, I talk about this stuff a lot. I give you tons of information. You can get to me at isoldaspeaks.com or at isoldatea pretty much anywhere. 
And I'm really grateful that you took the time to be here and to play with me on this stuff because it is super fun and super easy to implement. Thanks. Well, thank you. We look forward to supporting you, you and your business. Thank you so much for presenting here today. My pleasure.